Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be some women are just fucking nuts. We've got an email here from a viewer, and it sounds like he's obviously come across one or, or dated one. And and uh, so he says, "Hey, Coach," he says, "What's going on with women who seem to be balanced on the outside and who you've been great dating and lovemaking partners?" only to slowly find out during a no normal conversation that turns her into freaking the fuck out in an uncontrollable yelling fit of rage that was completely unexpected. Well, I bet that's a lot, of, a lot of fun. Everything's going along great. Things are going well, and you just happen to say something, and she just totally has a freak out. One of the things that's interesting and why I always say that you should date women for several years before you go ahead and get married is that when you first start dating somebody you're on your best behavior and they're gonna be on their best behavior and basically both people can usually fake who they really are for about 90 days in other words it's like they can hide we can hide all of our bullshit and all of our weird idiosyncrasies or just our personality quirks or whatever it happens to be our baggage our weaknesses but it's like after about third about 90 days what happens three months basically is you get to the point where you kind of you've been around each other enough and you get to the point where you're, you're comfortable being yourself and the real you just starts to come out and sometimes after about 90 days like you especially will see this a lot if you haven't dated a lot of women it doesn't matter whether you're in your early 20s and haven't dated a lot of women or you're in your 60s and you've been with the same woman since you were 16 years old and now you're either a widower or you're divorced until you've dated enough different women gone out on enough dates slept with enough women hooked up with enough women you're not going to realize all of the differences it's like women are so diverse and so different like when it comes to sex some women are screamers and they like to squeak and it's like everywhere you poke or you prod it's a uh, it's like you can almost like sing a chorus or you can you can play the keyboard with with their body they make so many different weird noises there's some women that will be really attractive and then when you have, have sex with them it's like throwing a hot dog down the hallway or a tic tac to a whale or swinging a bat in a garage it's like you can never seem to find a bottom in it and it's it's just not really that enjoyable and there's other women that when you have sex with them and they get on top it's like when they come they just they, it's like taking a five gallon bucket of water and just fucking throwing it on you. They're so wet. And it's just until you've dated enough different women and slept with enough different women, some women give really great head and some women couldn't give head if their life depended on it. And that's the way it is. And so you got to experience what's out there so you can realize what you're capable of, what the kind of person you can really attract. And the better you become as a man, the better quality of a man you become, the more you work on yourself and you make yourself a better quality mate, in essence you become the person that you want to attract, the better quality member of the opposite sex that you're going to be able to attract into your own life. And so it's like something, you know, it's shocking when you're dating a girl, especially that's why it's so important to remain objective in the beginning before you just fucking go, I mean, you're like totally fucking gonzo and you fall completely head over heels with love, in love with somebody and then you lose all of your ob objectivity and then you're in love and your things are going along great like this particular guy is he's having great sex he's like this is great it's awesome i'm the fucking king of the world i'm learning all cory wayne stuff and i'm having this great relationship with this girl and all of a sudden she has a freak out and you're like it's like jekyll and hyde it's like you feel like you don't even know this person anymore and so it's it's interesting. I mean, I've dated women that are a little crazy. And my mother, she was a psychotic schizophrenic. So when it comes to the clinical definition of crazy, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And so I can relate to people that have had experiences. Like I, one of the gals I wrote about my book, she's passive aggressive. I fucking love this girl. She's amazing. And I love her to this day. And she's still, I think she's one of the most amazing women I've ever met. But the point is problem is she's passive aggressive and so things will be sailing along great and she'll just fuck things up for no particular reason she'll know that she's fucking things up i mean you can google passive ag aggressive yourself and look at it <clears throat> but the th thing was is that a, a passive aggressive person when they fuck things up they won't do anything to fix it 
They know that they're fucking up. They know that they caused the problem, but yet they won't do anything to fix it. And like the relationship I had with this particular girl that was passive aggressive, what I learned was that her father was the mediator in the family. And so when her and her mother would have their little spats and they'd give each other the silent treatment, even though they're like the best of the friends, oh, I'm not going to speak to you. It's so like two months ago go by and they don't speak to each other at all and with like the holidays would be coming up and so her father would come over like will you please talk to your mother will you, will you please talk to your daughter it's gonna be the holidays it's like come on it's like enough of this shit and he'd get them back together and, if, and then they'd be together 24 7 talking like sisters and then something would happen and they'd get pissed off at one another and they don't talk and he would always take the dad solving things and that's kind of like the way our relationship was things would be going sailing along great and she would just fuck shit up she'd create drama or create a problem or just be a nasty bitch to me just completely out of the blue and be like what the fuck just because she was in a shitty mood and she would realize after she got out of her mood oh, wow i really fucked things up but she wouldn't do anything she just let it lie and she was, was like that with her whole family and you even though i love this girl so much we had great sex and she loved the hell out of me she still was a fucking freak every once in a while and i eventually got tired of putting humpty dumpty back together again and just decided, you know what, my life's going to be a drama-free zone. I saw a lot of drama in my family growing up, and I certainly don't want that bullshit in my life going forward. And I've never had a relationship with a girl since then that hasn't been effortless, where the communication isn't completely in an adult-like manner, on an adult, mature level, where you're both face basically focused on meeting each other's needs. So he says, I've done research and found that... that NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder, and BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder, closely matches what I experienced with this woman. I followed your advice to the letter, and it has worked like magic, but this impossible disorder pulled the rug out from under my feet. Again, that's why I say you've got to be objective, especially for the first 90 to 120 days that you're dating, because if you're like, I love this guy, and you're just like so fucking goo goo gaga and gonzo, it would be six months, and you're like sailing along, everything's fucking great, and all of a sudden, boom, you'll get your heart broken, and, and it's hard to do the right thing, and it makes it even harder when you're in a relationship with somebody you love, and they're fucked up, and there's nothing you can really do to fix fix them, and so relationships are hard enough without having to deal with somebody who's just like constantly backing up the dump truck and just dumping a whole load of horse manure into the living room of your relationship and creating fucking problems that you got to clean up. And what I realize, it's hard, but sometimes you just got to end a relationship. It's time to, to move on and, you know, if the, let tell a person, hey, go, go get help. Go get yourself fixed. Go see a shrink. Go see a counselor. Go talk to somebody, a psychologist, whatever you got to do. Deal with your issues because I'm not interested in being your shrink and my life's a drama-free zone and I'm just simply not going to put up with this bullshit. So unless you can communicate with me in a mature, adult-loving manner... I can't be in a relationship with you anymore. You just sometimes you have to have that conversation with a girl. So you tell her what you want. You tell her how she needs to communicate with you, and she's either gonna work on it and do it, or she's gonna keep acting like a jackass. And you have two choices: you can either accept it, accept the way she is, or say I'm getting the fuck out of here, like I did, and be patient. And eventually, you will find somebody even better. And when you're in that that next relationship that's when you'll be really glad that you grew a, a large set of fucking balls and said i'm out of here and stuck to your guns and stayed away from the chick because even though the fucking pussy's great and the sex is great it's just fucking bad juju to stay in a relationship with a girl who's constantly fucking things up for you so if you have a question you want to ask me go to my website click the contact me tab which will be on the left hand side of your screen and send me one to two paragraphs max and just give me several days to get back to you with a response if you want to get, talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session, and you can do that by going to my website, click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook, on my website, underneath the email sign-up box, is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device, just download one of their free e-reader apps for whatever electronic device you want to read my book on. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, the articles on my website, or my ebook, you can show your appreciation right now by going to my website. And on the would be a toolbar at the bottom of your screen, click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.